Hey there, this is Niels Beardfoot and today I want to show you how to build this sword from leather and foam. Starting with cutting out the foam where I used the laser for which did not turn out good but worked out in the end. I had to cut out the sword in pieces since my foam was not long enough and now I glue everything together. With knife and sandpaper I smooth out the edges. In addition to the ultra high density EVA foam on the core I use some low density on the edge to make it a little bit softer and glue a strap on there. With a wing divider I draw some parallel lines to the edge to mark where I want to cut away the foam for the edge of the blade. Just a raw box cutter blade works here really well to carefully cut away the excess foam. To smooth everything out, sandpaper. I cut open the backside of the blade for the wooden core when you have to make sure if you use wood as well that the grain is going parallel to the cutting edge. The end of the core is a little bit unstable so I used some soft drying wooden glue and some linen fabric to stiffen it out. And since it overall was a bit wobbly I did this also on the whole blade. Also don't forget to bevel and sandpaper your handle. For the blade I used some soft flexible leather straps. And again I use here some soft drying wooden glue. It's important to keep it soft so the blade will stay as soft as possible in the end too. I glue on the straps in two steps, so I just first glue them on on one side, about a few centimeters wide, and then I put glue on like shown here, also on the other side, and where I flip the leather over the edge to be nice and a little bit stretched and fit the edge well. The difficult part here is the tip of the blade. So on the first strap it's quite manageable, but on the second part, like shown here, it's a lot, bit, lot more work and check, okay, is the size correct and readjust things and then the end glue it together. For the application on the blade I used some bench tent leather here. I cut it into shape, moisten it and put on some runes for a rune blade. Here I did not use a swivel knife, just the background stamp since the corners were very tight and not easy to get into and this background stamp was quite enough for this. 
Next you want to bevel the edges and groove cut some parallel grooves to the edge for sewing. And then punch the sewing holes. It is quite important to get the holes on both pieces, front and back, exactly the same, else you will have trouble with sewing. For a base coat, I dye all the leather pieces black. With some resin, powder and the resist combination, I put on a metal looking sheen. To age everything up, I also add a coat of antique gel and rub away all the excess. Positioning of the pieces on the sword is very important. Not exactly where you put them, but uh, that you put them on both sides, front and back, on exactly the same position to make your sewing time easier. To prepare your blade for sewing, you want to use an awl to cut through the holes through the foam to the other side and then sew it. And don't be easily fooled. This sewing process took me around 4 hours since you're mostly blind sticking the needle through the foam and trying to reach the hole on the other side. Next, break the edges on the leather for a smooth and round handle. To give the sword some counterweight, I glued on some weighted band on the end of the handle. And to cover everything up, I use the same leather as on the blade on the handle. And what you have now is actually a pretty good base sword where you can make your own adjustments from it. For me I wanted to add a spine guard for the sword and to give it a little bit more body I put on small pieces of leather on the ribs. Doing this on both sides and after that gluing them together just on the ribs. And with some needle I adjust them to each other to fit as close as possible since I cut the holes already on both pieces in advance, which was not the best idea. So now I can drill them all the way through. And then sew them together, but still just on the ribs. Now I can cut away all the excess leather on the ribs with a knife, with a dremel and with a babbler and then I re-dye them and polish them up. To shape them I put them in water for around a minute and then I could take them out and start roughly shaping them after some drying time. For the pommel it's kind of the same, you want to sew the piece together and then put them into water and give it a little bit of shape. Mainly what you want to do is bend in the eyes and nose and give the overall shape of the skull a more rounded shape and then press in the forehead to get some eyebrows and put them on your pommel 
to make sure it fits nicely. When it sits as tight as mine, you can just put on some glue and directly glue it onto the pommel. For your guard, it's pretty much the same. After drying, you can just slide it on your blade, put it in position and start sewing. You want to sew it at least at the very front and the very back of the guard and if there enough pressure is applied this should hold just fine. I also added a decorative strap on the handle and after this you're done. I made this sword with the idea to use it in lab combat but so far I have not tried it out and actually I'm not sure it will survive long. So I can only tell you this to use this for cosplay. A core stuff might have been a good idea for all the way through. But well, that's something for next time maybe. So when I beat the F out of it, I will let you know what turned out. Thanks for watching and See you guys next time. Have a great day.